I-26 female, opened my husband's, 32 male, Snapchat, and it was a very explicit picture and caption from a girl. He's sitting out 20 feet from me and I don't know how to handle this. The title pretty much says it all. Throw away because my hubby is a Reddit user. He's most likely on it right now. Here we go. I've been married to my hubby for 1.5 years and we've been together for 5 years. I've never questioned his loyalty. He's fantastic. I felt he was really brilliant, witty, beautiful, and loyal. He's never given me cause to be skeptical of him. I found it weird that he downloaded Snapchat. He's not a major social media user. I have one, but I don't use it very often. We seldom ever snap at each other. He said that his pals were quite engaged and that he preferred it over Facebook. As I previously said, I've never had cause to doubt him, so I didn't think anything of it. My spouse went in the bathroom this morning and left his phone on my nightstand. I was half asleep when his phone began to beep, waking me awake. For SMS messages, we both used the same phone and ringtone. In my half-asleep condition, not understanding that he had placed his phone on my nightstand for whatever reason, I mistook it for my phone. I didn't even see his black phone cover, mine is green, and I glanced at who had texted. Mom, it said. Okay, my mom texted me. I'll ignore it till I'm awake. But there was a Snapchat notice below. Someone called Roxy took this photo. I was thinking, who the heck is Roxy? And why is she snap talking with me? When I opened it, there was an image of a cat on it. And not the sword with four legs and a tail at meows. I want your tongue inside me again, the caption added. Now, I instantly assumed that was an error. But I was awake now, having been startled awake by a vulva. I suddenly realized that I was looking at my husband's phone. I began sweating and felt like I was going to puke on the bed. I checked his Snapchat contacts, and she has a yellow heart next to her name. I checked up what it means, and it means best pals. I'm afraid I'm going to become ill. I didn't do any further snooping since I already know well discover. I simply don't comprehend how he managed to pull this off. We're content. I assumed we were content. We have four times a week at the very least. Reddit, here's the actual kicker. Our first kid is nearly 12 weeks pregnant, and I'm almost 12 weeks pregnant. He's about 20 feet away on the chair, and I'm at a loss for words to address him. How do I say what has to be said? Is it possible that I'm overreacting or misinterpret the situation? I'm devastated and unsure what to do. Update 1. I can feel it from where I am. Thank you so much it amazes me that strangers care so much about my kid and myself. Returning the love to each and every one of you. So, spouse is aware that something is wrong. I'm not sure whether he noticed that I opened a Snapchat from Roxy and is terrified of what I saw and is hesitant to bring it up, or if he's completely oblivious and can simply see I'm unhappy about something. Every hour he asks me whether I'm all right or if anything is wrong. I told him my sister was having a difficult day. Ironically, she had just broken up with her boyfriend. Why? He deceived us. I was going to her house for supper. I live in the Pacific time zone and to spend the night with her. I've arrived. My 20-year-old sister is a social media genius. She stalked his Facebook to see if she could find this Roxy person. She went through his friend's pals list. We had discovered her. At least, I'm rather certain about it. I couldn't see her face on Snapchat. Her was taking up too much space on the screen. She is Facebook friends with a close friend of my husband's. She works as a receptionist at a legal business owned by a friend of my husband's. My spouse works a few streets away from the legal business and often swings by for lunch with a buddy. That explains how they met. Still working on a confrontation strategy, attempting to gather as much information as possible beforehand. My sister and I both want to burn his life down, but I'm going to deal with it in the most mature manner possible so that I can walk away from him with my head held high and be a worthy role model to my baby daughter. I'm not sure if it's a girl, just a feeling. Is this good news? My uncle works as a lawyer. He deals with divorces the most of the time. I've already emailed him and asked if we might talk about some possible legal difficulties. I haven't specified what yet, but it seems like something I should do in person at our meeting. I told him it was crucial since we had a meeting scheduled for tomorrow. I'll try to keep you updated as much as possible. And thank you all again from the bottom of my heart, Internet Strangers. Update 2. So, my hubby cheated on me. He has been since maybe two weeks before last Christmas, he claims. I confronted him calmly and followed the advice of many of you by telling him that he needed to explain to Roxy as and why she is his best buddy on Snapchat. 
His look gave him away right away, yet he still attempted to deceive me at first. He said that she works with one of his friends and that they met when his buddy asked her to lunch with the two of them. He first stated that he just met her around two months ago. He described them as best friends, since he doesn't get many snapshots from others, and she is quite active on the app. He claims she simply sends randoms and is really into fitness, so she sends a lot of inspirational snaps about living a healthier life. He claimed that every now and again, he'll send her something back, like a photo of a hamburger or anything, just to make fun of her health consciousness. First, I inquired as to why he hadn't just told me about her. He said he didn't even consider it since she's only a passing acquaintance, not really a friend. Then I inquired whether he'd ever gotten anything untoward from her, not on purpose, he said. I'm guessing he went with it since he knew I opened that Snapchat and he knew it was a negative one. I inquired as to what not on intent meant. He became really protective, started rising his voice and stating he doesn't need to explain what it means, that occasionally people send the incorrect Snapchats to the wrong people by mistake. Then he had the audacity to remark something like, it's as if I'm on trial here. People told me that being pregnant would make you insane, but I never imagined it would be this horrible. Now, as several of you commented in my last article, it's astonishing that I'm able to maintain such a cool head. That's because I was taught by a mother who constantly told me that anger never gets you anywhere. You may be emotional, passionate, outraged, and so on, without ever raising your voice. Messages delivered quietly and succinctly are as loud and clear as those delivered shouting and screaming. With the exception of a few hiccups. It is how I have spent my life for the last 26 years. I am human. This was a one-time occurrence. I didn't precisely shout and holler, but I was enraged. For him to attempt to blame it on my pregnancy. That's both unimaginative and insulting. To cut a long tale short, he stated he'd never seen me this insane before and I told him I'd never seen a photo of another girl's on my husband's Snapchat before. He said that I should not have glanced at his Snapchat. I responded that it was an accident, but even if it wasn't, there should be no need for him to be getting Snapchats like that for me to see inadvertently or not in the first place. I informed him that although I was pregnant, I was also an intellectual person and his wife. Therefore, I knew he was lying and that I deserved to know the truth. I requested to view his text messages to see whether he had been messaging Roxy. Sure, he said. There are no messages. Then I inquired about his Facebook communications. He had the appearance of a child caught with his hand in the cookie jar. Note, he said. I inquired as to why. He eventually broke down and began to weep. He said he couldn't let me view the text because they damaged me. Because they were unsuitable. Then everything came out. The first night they met, they screwed in the back seat of her vehicle. Because this is already a lengthy post, I'll save you the gory details. But it's been a month's long romance. No, they did not always utilize defense. Despite the fact that I was recently tested for STI, I will be tested again in light of this knowledge. My uncle had previously promised that if he was disloyal, we would smack him in court. Really the only thing I'm ready to battle him over is our house. I've invested a lot of time and money into making this house my ideal environment. I will not seek spousal support, but I will want child support. I'm clearly devastated, and I told him he could stay at a motel or with Roxy if he wanted. I confronted him last night. Last night, my mother and sister remained with me and let me all over them for hours. I'm in right now, but I'm also thinking clearly. I know my next 10 movements, and I feel supported and safe in my choice to leave him and retain my child. I simply wanted to clarify a few points. My spouse is not a lawyer, but a close friend it is it is. If my spouse is a lawyer, there was some anxiety about my chances of victory in court. His buddy practices environmental law, so although I'm sure he can provide some guidance, he will not be my husband's divorce attorney. There were proposals that I end my pregnancy. I totally support the freedom to choose, and if I were in a different financial situation and lacking a support structure, I would probably terminate the pregnancy. However, I work for a huge corporation as a marketing manager. This not only allows me to work from home roughly half of the time, but it also provides me with financial freedom. I don't depend on my spouse for money, and I never done so. He works in technology, so even though he earns a solid living, I will not need spousal assistance. I have an amazing support system. This kid will be adored by so many people. Yes, if I have this kid, I will have to deal with my spouse for the rest of my life and it will make future relationships more difficult for me, but it is worth it. 
I've wanted this kid from the beginning, and I'm her mother, which means I'm strong enough to raise her on my own, because I have to be. Here's praying for a quick divorce. I'm ready to call it quits on this marriage, which is strange since I felt my life was as near to perfect as it could get only a few days ago. Update 3. I know it's only been a few days since I submitted this update, but I just wanted to say how wonderful everyone is. This level of support is just astounding. I wish I could respond to each and every one of your comments and messages, but due to the volume, I'll simply say thank you from the bottom of my heart to everyone who read my postings, commented thought of me, wished my baby and me the best, messaged me, and anything else. I am presently sitting outdoors at my parents' condo pool, sunning my tiny baby belly and reading each and every one of your lovely and encouraging comments. I simply want you to remember that you have made me happy and satisfied at a time when I am lacking in both. This is evidence that love exists, even if it didn't exist in my now-defunct relationship. And it is a potent force. All my love to you all. Update 4. I was going to publish additional information about what occurred during the argument with my husband, etc., but I changed my mind. I should keep certain information secret. My spouse has most likely read this message. Here's what I'll leave you with. My father and I were chatting late last night, and as usual, he had the exact thing to say to me. He explained to me that weak people are terrified of powerful people. He instructed me to continue terrorizing the weak. As a result, the only individuals who will not fear you are the bravest, strongest, and most deserving of you. Then he said that my husband is a weak who couldn't kick it with the world's toughest lady. I just wanted to leave you with that and urge everyone to be scary by standing up and refusing to stand for. This will be my last post on the subject. I have a lot of work ahead of me, so I'll probably be silent on Reddit for a bit. It's time to prepare for court and be intimidating. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you once again. Best wishes and love to all of you.